Again, uh, my I'm a fourth year medical student at Nova Southeastern University uh, College of Osteopathic Medicine down in Fort Lauderdale. Today, I'm presenting on a rare case of retained surgical towel presenting as gastroesophageal reflux disease uh, in a female patient. So a little introduction about the idea of a gossip paboma. So a gossip paboma is derived from the Latin gossipibium and the Swahili boma referring to a surgical gauze or towel that's unintentionally retained within a body cavity. These are very rare occurrences, especially in the US where we do have a lot of safety practices in place in order to prevent this from happening. But some of the clinical manifestations of this occurring are a function of the bacterial contamination and the location of the sponge within the body cavity. So retained forward foreign bodies can also serve as a nidus for infection. Um, it can lead to abscesses, fistulas, sepsis, bowel obstruction, and potentially even death, uh, which is why this case is kind of interesting because it's overall very benign in the clinical picture. So the case description for this patient, this was a 43-year-old female with a history of GERD as well as anemia. She presented to the emergency department with dull, crampy, left-sided abdominal pain um, that began about three hours after eating uh, a large meal her review of systems was overall negative. Her surgical history included two C-sections that were done in Mexico, which was her home country, as well as a hysterectomy following her last C-section in 2016. Uh, the patient was overall afebrile and her vitals were stable. Her physical examination was positive for mild epigastric pain and left upper quadrant pain. She didn't have any rebound tenderness, uh, no involuntary guarding. Um, her abdomen was otherwise soft, non-distended, her bowel sounds were normal, and she had no palpable masses either. Her initial laboratory findings were only specifically positive for her hemoglobin at six grams per deciliter, and she states that she typically lives around that area, so she was also not experiencing any signs of acute blood loss. Uh, some of the diagnostic studies that were done for her prior to her being admitted to the medicine team, she received a CT with IV contrast uh, from the emergency department that showed an indeterminate large abdominal mass measuring 18 by 11.2 by 8.9. And you can see the mass in the center picture here. Um, it's, it's in a spongiform pattern. It's well-defined mixed density. Um, and it looks like it's connected to a loop of bowel right over here. I don't think, I don't know. I don't think you can see my mouse. Um, but the patient felt relief of her symptoms after administration of the traditional GI cocktail, which is calcium carbonate, magnesium hydroxide, uh, Donatol, and the viscous lidocaine 2%. On day two of her admission, the patient remained stable and she had received two, two units of packed red blood cells for her anemia and surgery was consulted due to the imaging findings as well as her persistent severe anemia. Uh, she underwent an exploratory laparotomy that revealed gross ascites and a 45 centimeter by 32 by two centimeter rectangular shaped foreign body, possibly consistent with a towel. Uh, and you can see that in the pictures in the center right there. Four pieces of small bowel were adhered to a section of the large bowel and they were consequently resected and anastomosed. Um, so the patient outcome regarding this case, following an uncomplicated surgery, this patient was admitted for continued management, and the patient was discharged three days after with complete recovery from her symptoms. So overall, she was already clinically stable prior to the surgery, and she left the um, hospital in no distress at all. So this patient's intra and post-operative course following a removal of this seven-year-old retained surgical towel was uncomplicated. Um, it was due to the swift recognition and intervention prior to the onset of potentially life-threatening symptoms. A little bit about uh, retained surgical foreign bodies in general. So the National Quality Forum has, reta has retained surgical foreign bodies as one of 29 never events. Retained surgical items are estimated to most commonly occur in abdominal cases with an incidence between three and one per 1,000 operations in the US. Other than case reports, the frequency of retained surgical items at a global scale has not been recorded. I believe that's a little bit more important when it comes to this case because her 
surgeries all took place in Mexico, and there was very little data regarding uh, retained surgical towels within the country of Mexico, let alone the, U the entire world. Some of the risk factors for retained surgical items include emergencies, unplanned changes in procedures, length of procedure, late procedures, and elevated patient BMI. Of these risk factors, the only one we can kind of think that this patient might have is the emergency because considering the uh, need for the hysterectomy right after her last C-section, it was likely in the event of some sort of postpartum hemorrhage that was uncontrolled with other measures. Um, however, this was a part of the history that was not taken and we didn't really fully understand the need for her emergency C for the emergency hysterectomy as the patient also didn't really know. Some of the global initiatives that are in place um, are the Safe Surgery Saves Lives, where, and it was implemented by the World Health Organization in 2004 to, present retain, to prevent retained surgical items. And this initiative emphasizes the importance of routine surgical counts, uh, continued medical education that emphasizes the role of safety procedures specifically for patient safety. So despite these global efforts, hospitals ultimately implement individualized systems for surgical counts, um, as well as other safety measures. So not all hospitals have the same exposure to retained surgical items. Aside from routine surgical counts, methods such as radiographic imaging and radiofrequency tagging of surgical sponges could provide future directions of quality improvement measures. The radiographic imaging was suggested in cases of emergency abdominal surgery, as this modality surprisingly is more cost effective than the cases of retained surgical items where you have to go back and get them anyways. So the upfront cost of the radiographic imaging ended up being um, a lot more budget friendly than actually having a case of infection, um, return to the OR, et cetera. So although definitive solutions to prevent retained surgical foreign bodies are available, the implementation and utilization of such services is difficult to engage, to gauge and standardize across hospital systems throughout the world. So it would be interesting to see future directions in research and potentially quality improvement measures um, that can uh, be done at a global scale and can be quantified as well. And that concludes my presentation, if anyone has any questions. Wonderful presentation. The towel is quite large. Um, yeah. I would want to ask really quickly, other than GERD, is there any other suggested things to look out for um, with a retained surgical towel? Like yeah, so typically, um, and what that what was atypical about this presentation was that this patient just presented with what seemed like she just had a large meal, but typically a retained surgical towel uh, would present with pretty severe signs of infection. You would see a white blood cell count, you would see a fever potentially, maybe some tachycardia as well. Uh, the typical signs of an infection um, because of the massiveness of this actual retained surgical towel. So that's what was kind of surprising about this case in particular. Um, I do have another question. Um, I uh, well, I saw that her hemoglobin a present a presentation was of six, and you mentioned that in the surgery that they did actually remove some bowel. Um, was it was was there any any signs of like 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 you guys know about that like the patient actually had any bowel ischemia or any perforation, or do you think it is this is independent from the? from the retained towel itself. Thank you, that was, that's a really good question. So it seemed like this was very independent from the retained towel. Um, perhaps her anemia has to do with her history of what I'm assuming could have been the postpartum hemorrhage that she had after that C-section, which required the hysterectomy in the first place. And um, maybe she has an unknown coagulopathy that we just are not aware of, but there was no signs of bowel ischemia. There was no signs of any perforation. Um, she was, she had no signs of peritonitis or anything like that. So it was, again, very surprising, very benign case. <laughs> Thank you.